This is RobinBremer.net is my website and today I'm going to go over my chapter on, let's see, chapter 15 it is, on in Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times, my first book in a series of at least three. Um, but Raising the Dead is very controversial and I don't know why because in the same sentence where it says heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leopards, it says raise the dead. It doesn't give any kind of qualification. It doesn't say uh, some people with a gift raise the dead. Some people that have a special anointing raise the dead. It said do all those things because all those things are part of um, witnessing, evangelizing, part of reconciliation. And we've been giving the ministry of reconciliation. And that means to that Jesus died for all of the our sins and all we have to do is receive that free gift and then we're put back in the position that God originally gave us in the garden that was authority and dominion over all the earth to rule and subdue and have dominion and to bring everything in line with heaven on earth like Jesus prayed your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and he made us ambassadors to bring his will on earth to change everything in this world uh, that's under the curse and when it comes to us it's not under the curse because we take the authority and dominion and we change it into the blessing because in the new covenant the new covenant is the promise of the Holy Spirit which empowers us to use the blessing so the Holy Spirit and um, forgiveness of our sins and um, See, and the blessing is part is is the new covenant, and it's all about grace. It's not by earning it <clears throat> or doing anything to get it. It's freely given to us. So, with that introduction, I want to go over. Um, I'm going to go over the next couple of days on uh, kingdom authority to raise the dead. Now, I want to remind you today is the 16th, and on the 18th we're going to have Sandra Thompson sharing, and I'm really excited about this. Uh, sharing about her latest book about prosperity and so you'll get to to check that out on the 18th so for today um, let's see it's very important that your dividing line is two things I want you to remember about my teaching is John 10 10 the thief comes to kill steal and destroy and I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly the Holy Spirit is a life giver and the dividing line in the Bible is John 10:10. 10, 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. If anything in your life is killing, stealing, or destroying, it's not from God. There's the demonic spirit behind it. Um, Jesus came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. A lot of religious people get mad about that because they think abundance is not good. But God is a God that is extravagant. He is overflow. He is more than enough, much more than you need. Um, abundance. Okay, so back to this so that's the dividing line John 10 10 and the number two thing about the dividing line is the cross makes a difference Matthew Mark Luke and John are before the cross just like the Old Testament is before the cross after the cross there's a difference there's a switch the, the new covenant is about the minister ministry the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit bringing through you the blessing on the earth and that's an exciting revelation and, and so whatever you look at in the New Testament, replace the word uh, God with Jesus. And then if it doesn't fit the New Covenant, it's for the Old Covenant. It's not for today. Okay, so chapter 15 in my book. Um, the dividing line is John 10.10. 10. And 1 Corinthians 15.26 says that death is the last enemy to be put under our feet. Or no, 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 I said that wrong. In fact that's wrong in my book right here I thought we caught it last time but it's not it's the last enemy to be destroyed it's already put under our feet and that's 1st Corinthians 15 26 man I discovered a boo-boo in my book oh that makes me sad okay anyway <clears throat> um, <clears throat> that was my clowning coming out I'm a clown ventriloquist and I minister the word <laughs> that way also um, Okay, one of the things here <clears throat> in the book is, if death was of God, you could think of it this way. 
if death was of God, if every time somebody died it was because it was God's will, you could look at it this way. You could say, my neighbor's daughter died in a car accident. She was on fire in the car. She was trapped and she couldn't get out. Her parents were right there listening to her scream. Her best friend drove the car. Her best friend got out of the car. She caused the accident. She was okay, but the girl died in the accident. Now, you, what kind of God would create that scenario and not only that her she wasn't saved so she went to hell so God killed somebody and sent him to hell you see how death is not from God and just because somebody dies does not mean it's God's will death is an enemy it's under our feet and it's going to be the last enemy to be totally destroyed but death we have authority and power and dominion over death we can pull people back and raise them from the dead and that's what this chapter is all about and one of the last and great uh, end time signs is going to be raising the dead you're going to see miracles that you just couldn't even imagine in your mind happening but the thing is Christians have to grow up we have to stop trying to be good people and we have to instead have a relationship with Jesus Christ a supernatural relationship we have to be supernatural and we will be because of that empowered to walk right inspired and encouraged to walk right it's like when you're married and you fall in love you don't want to do anything that hinders that relationship slows down that relationship bogs down that relationship you want to do everything to please that person you want to spend time with that person so you're not going to mess it up and the same thing is stop trying to be a good person stop trying to do right and get in a relationship with Jesus Christ and you'll fall so much in love with him that your behavior the fruit of that will be a change in behavior I could just go off in different directions um so one of these things uh, is going to be raising the dead one of the end time signs <clears throat> um, now if you don't understand how death came to be on the earth you might not understand or agree with me that death is an enemy we have authority over remember Jesus put all our enemies under our feet and it clearly says that death is an enemy also here in Romans 5 12 17 and 21 it talks about death entered the man through death entered into the world okay by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed unto all men for all have sinned death reigned even over them that had not sinned just like um, when Adam sinned everybody born after him was born a sinner because like begets like and same thing with death when Adam sinned he brought death into the world death wasn't in existence until Adam found out what good and evil was he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil before there he had the knowledge of good and evil he was naked after he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he was still naked but he became ashamed so you see that's like a, that's a picture of the law when the law was put in place it was showing us that we couldn't keep it but now the law is taken away and we have grace because wherever the law is there has to be a punishment and the punishment was given to Jesus Jesus took all the punishment for the whole world for all their sins and when they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior they received that gift that he paid the price for their sins their sins are already punished so um, we, I'm going on rabbit trails here so that is how death came into the world and I'm gonna have um, this is chapter 15 of my book so I'm gonna have this uh, on the blog so you can actually go and do some studying yourself so death is a result of man's original sin and um, death is not supposed to reign in a Christian life the Holy Spirit was given to us to give life we have rivers of life coming out of us everything about the Holy Spirit is life and I'm kinda of going into my third book which I'm working on right now talking about the Holy Spirit but it's so important I wish I could just take it all and wrap it up in one book but you'll have to get all three books to really get a hold of this um, death is not supposed to reign in a Christian life uh, Romans 5:17 through one man's offense death reigned much more those who receive an abundance of grace so you have to understand great you have to receive grace it's not by works it's not by obedience it's by God's grace it's freely given no strings attached um, okay um, 
those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, meaning we're right standing with God. We don't have to do anything to get right standing with God. We're right standing with God by the blood of Jesus. They will reign in life. And life is to reign that's not death. Um, knowing that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. That's Romans 6, 9. Um, so we are in Christ Jesus, so death no longer has dominion over us. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 that was. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 and 57. Jesus took the law, fulfilled it, and took it away. We no longer have to pay attention to the law. Everything is by grace and a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying it's okay to sin. I'm saying the, the law uh, is not for us. It was Jewish law, and Jesus fulfilled it, and making instead making a covenant for everybody in the New Testament, which is grace and the Holy Spirit and the words of our mouth. And that's my third book. Um, okay, so the devil had power over death, and but the born-again believer has power now because Jesus took that power away from him. Um, now, I, I had seven opportunities to raise the dead. Uh, by, um, by opportunities, I mean somebody died down the street and, uh, for example, I didn't get to touch all of them. I didn't even get in prox close proximity of some of them. Uh, but three of them I got to lay hands on and pray for them. And unfortunately, the three that I got to lay hands on and pray for, I only had like three minutes. And I had to watch out for certain people coming into the room. I had to leave before they came in so I won't get, wouldn't get in trouble. Because one of them, I was at the funeral home. Somebody had to guard the door. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so... Um, uh, so I'm just going to end there today and tell you a little bit about some of the people I tried to raise from the dead. Um, the first person I tried to raise from the dead, um, I began to have revelation knowledge of this. And I decided, you know, I, I began to walk in it because I don't feel as though there's enough Christians out there that are being taught that it, it's like, it's in the same sentence. I just don't understand. It says, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, freely you give and freely you receive. It's all in the same sentence. Why do we cut out the part that says raise the dead? I mean, people teach about casting out demons. People teach about um, healing the sick. Uh, why raise the dead? Why are we afraid of that? Why do we freak out about that? You were created to be supernatural. That's the new phrase God gave me. My my advertising for my book and my whole theme is you were created to live in God's supernatural presence and power. And then God said to me something just the other day and it just so excites me. He says, you were created to be supernatural. And I think that is so awesome. We are God's kids and we were created to be supernatural. And the Holy Spirit in us can do abundantly more than we ask, think, or imagine. Well, the first person I tried to raise from the dead was a 16-year-old, <clears throat> well, 18-year-old boy that both my twins knew, and um, <clears throat> I went to, uh, actually went to the funeral home and tried to raise him from the dead. I had just three, five minutes maybe at the most there while somebody guarded the door before the parents came because I, I didn't want the parents to see me in there, you know having my hand on their son's hand and speaking to him and trying to raise him from the dead because that would have freaked them out. Of course, they probably would have gotten more freaked out if I raised him from the dead, which is going to happen. Not only is it told that that's what we're supposed to do and we have power to do it, um, it's also been prophesied over me that I would raise the dead, and we all should and can and will. And that was the first person. Um, and um, God told me to, I said, God, you sent me there to raise him from the dead why didn't he raise up and he said um he said stay on your faith till after the funeral and, and that's what i did and then another one um there i i oftentimes follow ambulances and police i i pray for them when i hear them and sometimes i just this boldness comes on me and i follow them one particular time nobody was dead in this incident but one particular time I followed the ambulance to a house of people that I knew 
and <clears throat> the police are kicking down the door with this big long shotgun and I'm right behind them it's like I look back and I go who did I think I was I know who I was I was the king's kid and had authority and dominion over whatever was going on in that house <clears throat> the, kid, the cops broke the glass and went in and around the house with a big shotgun and I walked, followed, walked right in the house and I said excuse me I'm a, I'm a minister I know these people can I help you and they go yes can you help these two girls um and they asked the girls if they knew me and they said yeah and so I took them out in the truck and I was able to minister to them and keep them safe while the police searched the house they had been tied up and gagged and some stuff went on and, and I, I, I felt like I really could bless those girls and the, the parent for protecting them and being with them and ministering to them but I do follow I have followed ambulances and I heard an ambulance down my street one day and whenever there's an ambulance I just take a holy anger you know I always pray I come against the spirit of fear and death and pray for wisdom for whoever and protection but <clears throat> I follow this ambulance down the street because this is my neighborhood I have authority and dominion in this neighborhood nothing was going to happen as long as I was around so I went down the street to where the ambulance was and um, I stood there watching for a while and I decided to to go on I turned around and came back and um, what, what had happened was somebody had died in the garage and um, they were trying to resuscitate him and the emergency medical technician was kind of freaking out I don't know if she was new or if she knew the person but she was stressed out quite a bit and so I asked the people the crowd standing around staring in the garage as they were trying to work on this man uh, I told them I was a minister is there any way I could help and they said she's in the house so I went in the house and I I, I just asked and she said it was her husband or her father or I don't know who it was some relative father or someone close and I think it was her father and so I just held her and prayed for her and everything and then I um, asked the emergency technicians if I could pray for the man who had died and she says yes after the family's done and so I stood there praying and talking to the people for a few minutes and you could hear one person after another going into the garage and just screaming and grieving and all this sorrow was coming on them and I decided that that was not the place or the time to go in and to try to raise them from the dead because they were all freaked out and and the atmosphere and the fact that they were they were grieving it, it I w felt like I was invading their privacy so I you know prayed with them and then I left and I continued to pray to believe to raise them from the dead but it turned out that a couple weeks later I walked by maybe a month later I walked a couple months later it was I walked by that house I stopped in to ask how they were doing and I led both of the people who lived there uh, whose father and brother it was I led them both to the Lord and then I, I thought that was just like so exciting and so cool and then oh, one of the other times that I tried to raise someone from dead was a 14-year-old uh, girl who had gotten in a car accident and I was able to go to the funeral home and also at the funeral home again and some of these funeral people home decided they didn't like me one in particular was real religious and she she didn't like me coming in there because she knew what I was doing and she just had a fit about she she just had this animosity about her um, so I stopped going but I had a friend that worked there and they let me in and um, when the, the person was in the showroom you know where you go up and touch him or whatever this is how the other kid was too I went up and I was holding her hand and talking to her and speaking life to her and commanding her to come back to life um, I only had three minutes there again before you know they warned me that the father was coming in the door so I went out the other door because you know I I didn't know him and he didn't know me and I didn't I didn't want to cause any more tension um, so I just bound the spirit of sorrow and grief in the whole place and 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 left and that was um, the third person I think it was that I was able to actually physically touch and try to bring back to life and like I said um, these were my baby steps these were the first time and I've grown this has been probably a couple years ago a year, probably yeah about two years ago these deaths were some as early as two years ago and so I was I was baby stepping you know um, I remember one time I tried to bring one of the first things I did when I was just getting a hold of this and I had no clue but I was ready to go is I had a rooster uh, that died 
I think my dogs killed him. And I tried to bring him back to the dead, from the dead. I left him outside and I tried to bring him back to the, from the dead. But the fourth day he started stinking and I just threw him in the woods and I said, ah, forget it. I don't care if you come back or not. You were, you bit me, <laughs> you know, because he, he, he was a band teacher. So he'd come up and he started getting rough and with me and stuff. And, but I really liked him. He was cool. But I didn't raise him from the dead. I did manage, however, to raise a dead plant, very, very dead plant from the from the dead, and that was pretty cool. <laughs> it was practically overnight. Um, but um, we all are intended to raise the dead. It's all part of who we are and who God created us to be. And I hope I inspire you to begin to get into the Word and to study. Get my Bible studies. Um, they're free right now on my website, robinbremer.net. I have three Bible studies. The second Bible study is really from my book that's in the process of being published uh, some uh, in the next couple of months this year. And the Bible studies themselves are going to be published February, March. So get them now while they're free because once they're published, they won't be free anymore. So I hope I encourage you uh, to at least get into studying about Raising the Dead if you can find any other teaching. Go to my website, read my book um, about Raising the Dead. Leave your comments. I want to know your experiences. Uh, and tomorrow I'll talk more about that. And then the next day, we're on uh, Friday, we'll have Sonia talking about uh, finances. Uh, and I hope you check her out. So I'll talk to you tomorrow.